Do not make this a trend. I want some nasty. Okay, so we're talking about Doug McBuckets, bro. Where did all this come from? So I know he just hit his career high in seven three-pointers. And I got to... First off, I was completely right about Doug McDermott. Everyone that was pretty upset with the Spurs getting Doug McDermott, even people that weren't even Spurs fans were saying, what are they thinking getting Doug McDermott? I know it's been one game, but this was a perfect pickup for what we were trying to do. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But there is something I need to discuss when it comes to this team, because there is something in particular that's irritating me, but also gives me a little a lot of hope actually a whole bunch of hope so here's the thing so let's go ahead and look at the stats here first we're going to look at doug mcdermott give him his praise really quickly um he's shooting 55 percent from three now don't get me wrong most of all of it came from that last game but in the span of three games this is just the reality of it okay he's shooting 55 percent 14 points per game he he is he is playing wonderful for us he is playing over his contract in which i expected and i hope that this trend continues but the trend i don't want to see continue is this you see what i'm saying not not Jakob. i don't know why i highlighted him but yeah yeah look at this yeah no one else is shooting threes now i'm gonna go ahead and break this down for a second because we're shooting the last couple games about around 20 percent that is terrible and here's the thing Devin Fassell yes you need to shoot at least one for three two for four I mean something okay you, you need to hit a few I understand that Lonnie Walker even though he went one for eight he did do other things he went seven for 15 overall um but yeah you look you did shoot three I mean eight three-pointers you got to hit at least a couple of them and the reality of it is Lonnie Walker is a better shooter than this he's just streaky sometimes now I'm going to try to excuse a few of these people. Now, Keldon Johnson, i never seen him as a shooter. He's going to have to get better as a shooter. But I, I want to just focus in on this, this Bryn Forbes. This can't be a trend from him. I know it's only been a few games. It's the beginning of the season. But we're going to need him to step up. And if he, if he doesn't, he actually has no utility on the court. Like, you can't utilize him at all. And that's not me just trying to dogpile on Bryn Forbes because I think he gets enough of that, and I'm high on Bryn Forbes. I think he has a competitive nature to him. I think that he's a pretty good player, and he's a decent shooter. I think he's actually a really good shooter. But we can't have this trend because at the end of the day, help this man. Doug McDermott is going to need some help. He can't be the only one shooting threes. And the reality of it is, all of these games that we played thus far, I know we won the first one, but these other two, like, they were close games against a team that, both teams in which they have superstars, and we were close all the way through. You can't tell me that if our percentage isn't at least 31, 32%, that we don't come away with a win. We're doing everything perfect right now, but we can't just rely on Doug McDermott. And I hope this doesn't turn into a whole Brent Forbes moment again. And you guys remember, we were highly reliant on Brent Forbes to the point where we were setting up every single play for Brent Forbes. And I think that Doug McDermott is going to need some plays set up for him. And I think we should utilize it. You know, similar to what they do with Steph Curry uh, with the Warriors or even what they do with Klay Thompson. They set up plays for him. And Doug McDermott deserves that. He's basically in his prime the spurs got him at the perfect time and he can do so much so many things on the court but with that being said he's gonna need help help him and i would even add that i don't understand why i don't understand why jock lindell isn't playing i don't understand why base diop isn't playing now the primo thing we're going to talk about that a little bit in another video but i will say this you have to utilize shooting and at the end of the day, here's the thing. These guys are going to have to shoot too. It's not going to, it's not a matter of plug and play and these guys save us necessarily, but man, teach them a lesson. Get them off the court. If you're not going to hit your threes, man. But overall, look, I'm happy with the team. We're super close, super close to getting some really big wins. And this is going to be the difference between us winning 
and making some type of run or us just being left out of the playoffs again but i really do believe that they will fix this i mean there's no way you're going to shoot 20 percent for the entire season it's going to go up and at the end of the day we're talking about it and if we're talking about it we we come on we know the players know <laughs> they probably talked about this in halftime like guys you're shooting 20 percent. this is terrible 10, 10 for 39 and lastly as far as the bucks game you can look at their percentage 42 percent. this was the difference that was the biggest difference Free throw percentage was great on both ends. Overall, field goal percentage was fine. But the three-point percentage, that, that's what's going to hurt us. So we got to get that together, help this man. But at the end of the day, we were, not just me, we as Spurs fans were completely right about Doug McDermott. Um, some Spurs fans didn't want him, but I think most Spurs fans were pretty happy about the pickup. And uh, I think that this is going to continue. So we'll see what happens. I'll give it you guys later. If you want to support the channel, look in the description for that. Only $2 per month. Love you guys. Give it to you later. Deuces.